years back when European and American observers went to Asia, and they observed Buddhists over in Asia, and the Buddhists seemed happy. And these scholars said, these people don't understand their religion. The Buddha taught a very pessimistic doctrine all about suffering, nihilism, they said. Of course, the issue was that the, the Westerners didn't understand what the Buddha taught, and it was the Asians over there who did. The Buddha's teachings are very happy. They offer a way of understanding life so you can put an end to suffering, and it works. They see people among them who are happy, and even though they may not all of them be practicing all the way, still there's that sense of confidence that comes when you know you've got a good handle on life, a good set of teachings that you can rely on as your basic working hypotheses. And it's very positive. You, can, you put it into suffering. How positive can you get? So when we see temple festivals and things like that, look at the, the very first one after the Buddha's passing away. Music and dancing for seven days. Of course, it was solemn dancing, but still there was a sense that they'd been present on something really important. They wanted to celebrate that. It's good to keep these thoughts in mind because we're going to be having a busy weekend this weekend. People coming to make merit. It's for Sankaran. It's not a specifically Buddhist holiday, but it's become Buddhist here in the West. As people have taken it as an opportunity to practice generosity. So that's something for which we should have some empathetic joy. It's all too easy when you're trying to be here and find some quiet and this tornado of activity comes through for a couple days. But it's not a destructive tornado, it's a good one. I guess that's a bad image. There's going to be a lot of activity, and it requires two things. One is you have to learn how to keep your center. This is where equanimity is useful. Things arise and pass away, and just keep it at the arising and passing away level. And as for the part of the mind that complains, you don't have to listen to it, because the practice isn't just sitting with your eyes closed. The Buddha taught a complete path that includes generosity and virtue, along with the meditation. And so be happy in other people's generosity. And it's a good time for us to practice our generosity, too, especially for those of us who live here long term. There's a very common tendency to start getting possessive about the place. And this is a good reminder. We're not in this alone here. This is not our place. The place has been built through the generosity of lots and lots of people, many of whom we've never seen. And this weekend will be a chance to get to see some of them. and to make merit together. So the issue is having a positive attitude toward all the activity and at the same time internally having the ability to keep your mind at equilibrium, have your inner gyroscope, keeping you on course. So it's a matter of right view and right effort. If you see any negative mind states coming up in you, it's your responsibility to take care of them. And don't wait until you're sitting here and meditate to take care of them. You have the chance throughout the day. You see anything negative coming up, you say, I don't want to go there. I don't have to go there. This is a good rule of thumb, not only while we have an active weekend like this, but all throughout your practice. Whatever comes up that's unexpected, whatever comes up that's not in line with what you want or what you expect, your first priority is to keep 
watch in your state of mind. Make sure it's balanced and it's got the sublime, sublime attitudes there to help it, starting with goodwill and its two manifestations is compassion and empathetic joy, and then the equanimity. And these are the virtues with which we interact with other people and make sure that the interaction doesn't hit us in the wrong way. Remember the Buddha's instructions for when you hear something that really, as they say in Thai, lies athwart your ears. In other words, it doesn't go smoothly into your ears and you get, get stuck there. Don't let it get stuck. Because what, what is it that gets it stuck? It's the narratives you tell yourself. I don't like hearing people say this. I don't like them doing that. And the Buddha said, you know, try to depersonalize it. Just an unpleasant sound has made contact at the ear. And when the sound ends, that's it. And then keep in mind that the people who come here are coming here with meritorious intentions. That makes it a lot easier to, to deal with whatever you don't like. But still, even when their intentions are not good, you have to look after your own ears. You have to look after your own eyes. Nose, tongue, body, mind. These are your responsibilities. And ideally, whatever comes up at these six senses is something that you want to be able to deal with skillfully. Now, to maintain the equanimity that we need in order to deal with these things, it's not just enough to remind yourself to be equanimous. You've got to have a good foundation inside, and this is where the meditation comes in. You want to be able to create this state of being at stillness, or at least have a still center here in the mind. And be very good at maintaining that. We'll have practice tomorrow as we're setting up the place. As you're doing the work, make sure okay, your still center has to stay there. The image the Buddha has is of a man carrying a bowl of oil on his head. And the bowl is filled to the brim with oil. And right behind him is another man with a sword raised. And if the first man drops even one drop of oil, then the second man is going to cut off his head. And in the meantime, that man is walking between, on the one hand, a beauty queen who is singing and dancing, and on the other side there's a crowd that's really excited about the beauty queen. And the beauty queen, of course, stands for all the things outside that you want to look at and listen to. And the crowd stands for your reactions. And you want to maintain this sense of still center in between. So you don't, don't get distracted by the beauty queen and you don't get distracted by the crowd. You know what you've got to do. First priority, don't spill any drop of oil. Unfortunately, you don't have a man with a raised sword behind you. But it's good to keep that image in mind. That if you're careless, you're looking after something that only you can look after. And if you're careless now, what's it going to be like when you leave the monastery? What's it going to be like when you get out and do all your other activities? It's not going to be just one drop of oil. You just the whole thing gets spilled over. You don't even know where the bowl is anymore. You don't even know where the oil is anymore. That's no help. You want to learn how to develop at least some sense of still center inside. So that when there are pains in the body, when there are, let's just say, painful words being said, you can maintain your equanimity, you can maintain your patience. Because this is how we develop the strength of equanimity and patience. Not by just sitting there and gritting our teeth and bearing with it, but giving ourselves a sense of goodwill for ourselves and a sense of well-being inside. You focus not on what's difficult, but focus on what's good, what you've got going. 
the good things you've got going. And use your heedfulness as that, the man with a raised sword. To remind yourself that things are going to get a lot more difficult than this as life goes on. And if you spill your oil just over a few words that someone else said, what's it going to be like when you meet up with aging, illness, and death? You have no oil at all. So try to look after this bowl of oil while you're here with your eyes closed as you get up and move around. Try to have that sense of balance inside, stillness inside. So when you're dealing with all the people we'll be dealing with this weekend, it won't be with a sense of frustration or whatever. You're coming from a position of strength, a position of well-being, and you're happy to see other people make merit in their way. That helps keep everything in balance. <laughs>